My name's Dominic. I'm from MEA. We make GreenBrain, which is a soil moisture monitoring, uh, weather monitoring software, uh, web application that's designed to ideally make irrigation scheduling as easy as it can be. Um, my favourite quote on soil moisture monitoring at the moment is from Chris Rogers in the Barossa. He says that irrigating without soil moisture monitoring is like driving a car without a fuel gauge. It will work, but at some point things will go seriously wrong. Um, so I, what I'll try and do today is to very briefly touch on some of the various aspects of theory around irrigation um, soil moisture, but only in so far as to explain what decisions or what of why that is important, what decisions arise from that, and then show you how you would make those decisions with GreenBrain. So there's sort of four main sections that cover the different um, different factors that I'm going to talk about, um, and I let's dive straight in. Um, so. You'll probably have a good idea as to the active root zone. I did look for an image of a vine instead of this tree, um, but they all looked pretty sickly. So I thought I'd stay with the tree instead of trying to get something very specific to dried fruit. Um, so the active root zone is the sort of the majority of the root zone below the soil um, surface where crops will take up water quite easily from. Um, and when you're irrigating, you'd, you'd, you'd ideally want to be irrigating the active root zone, not irrigating much deeper than that, much further than past that that level so that you're not pushing fertiliser and water past the, the point at which your crop isn't able to extract it easily. So in this theoretical example, looking at a, an active root zone of about 50 centimetres, what that translates to in green brain, particularly on the average graph, is the, the depths from a capacitance probe that you've got selected. So you can see on this slide at the bottom, the first uh, 10, 20, 30, 40 and 50 centimetre sensors are coloured, they're selected, and the 60, 70 and 80 centimetres uh, the sensors are deselected, so they're greyed out. That means the average soil moisture is being shown, is being plotted, is being used for calculations from that top 50 centimetre active um, part of, the, part of the, the soil profile. And that is something we're going to keep coming back to again and again, because for all of the other ideas, getting that active root zone um, set is is sort of crucial. So if we look at how long to irrigate for, you're looking at infiltration rates. If you imagine you turn on the irrigation system, again, this is probably pretty pretty basic, but it's a, it's a, I thought I'd just try and, try and pass on the, um, the theory and the, the ideas behind why soil moisture monitoring and why the graphs and why green brain is designed a certain way. You turn on an irrigation system, over time, the water will, um, will will make it down through the profile and it will get to some level. And in theory, you're wanting it to get the active root zone filled up. You're not wanting it to go too far. So there's a time at which you want it for how long you want to irrigate in order to just fill up that active root zone and to to make sure you're giving your, your crops enough water so you're not just filling up the first 10, 20 centimetres and you're not filling up one and a half metres of the soil profile if, you, if, you're, if, you, if you're not going to have that water accessible to the plants. And the way we do that in green brain is instead of looking at the average graph, we looked at the stacked graph. So you can see the green arrow looking at the graph mode being a stacked graph. It essentially shows you a cutaway of the soil profile with your 10 centimetre sensor at the top, then your 20 centimetre then and so on down through the profile. Um, one thing I've done here is 
left the the the, the y-axis with percent moisture on just ignore that for the time being that shouldn't really be there but you imagine a, a perfect irrigation event where you've you've you're irrigating just the right amount of time to to wet up the top 50 centimeters what you'd see on the stacked graph is after that irrigation event the 10 centimeter then 20 30 40 and 50 to a lesser extent will all increase and begin to sort of change moisture levels because the water's getting down that down to that depth but you won't see the same thing at the 60 in the yellow um, the 70 in the sort of pinky and the 80 below that so every time you're irrigating this is this is sort of a trial and error um, method every time you you put an irrigation on you can check the stat graph and, and make sure that you've you the water has infiltrated down to the right to an ideal depth and then it's not going too shallow so you can see here you're seeing um, for a shorter irrigation event you'd see the 10 in green the 20 centimeter in purple and the there's a little bit of movement in the orange um, so you, you're wetting up the top 30 centimetres, you're not getting water down to 40 and 50 centimetres. Um, so there's a lot more of that, the profile that could be filled with the irrigation. Um, and then the opposite side of things is irrigating for too long, will you'll start to see movement at more than just the top, the, than the sensors within what you've defined as your active root zone. So uh, this last irrigation event is showing sort of, um, every one of the eight sensors so the full um, 80 centimeters of soil profile that you're measuring is showing in a, a response soon after that irrigation event and and there's a lot of water going past the root zone fertilizers and things like that are being pushed down past that um, past the point where the crops can access them so just some examples from um, from users of green brain I, from memory this is a someone up in Mildura this is sort of the example I use all the time it's it's lovely it's perfect it's textbook um, you can see repeated irrigation events uh, wetting up the 30 centimeters so that orange line very cleanly and almost no activity at all at the 40 centimeter um, and then you can see very neat stepping um, or steps down. So every day the vines are taking moisture out of the soil, which is the drawdown. And then overnight it levels off until the following day. So where you can see that stepping happening, that means there's um, where, you, where you see reasonably sized steps. That means there's uh, uh, enough water in the soil for the crops to pull out easily and to use for active growth um, each day uh, so then some other examples this is this is the real world example of irrigating for too long you see each of these irrigation events the 10 centimeter and the 80 centimeter all the way through are uh, wetting right up and you're seeing the water just pushing straight through the profile um, past sort of so much too much is going on essentially and then um, these are all irrigation events that are hardly wetting the surface. They're getting down to 10 centimetres and some of one of the ones in the middle may have gone down to 20 or 30, but only a very small amount. Um, so there's a lot of water being put on, but it's all being lost at the same time. Um, so there's, it's, it's a very inefficient strategy. Um, and then the last, last example I've got here in these in these rates these are all of the stacked graph is it's not quite as clear I've said possibly too often um, each irrigation is going on it's wetting up to the yellow line so about the 60 centimeter but it's going on every day repeatedly so it depends a little on the type of, on the crop type and on the weather conditions and things but just the the sheer Sort of consistency of every single day putting on that amount of water is it's hard to see what is going on really um, so it's hard to know if you if the crops are needing that much water or not 
Um, okay, so over over a growing season, um, the the next sort of example is how much water. Not example, sorry. The next consideration is how much water your soils will hold and what that would do to affect irrigation strategy over over a full season rather than on a day day by day basis. Um, in winter, if if you get good winter rains and you you can fill up the soil profile, um, I've been saying this for a few years now and it doesn't seem to ever eventuate that people are really filling up their soil profiles. Um, in theory, if you've got a full, a nice full soil moisture profile, you've got um, good good amount of reserves of moisture that you, your crops can pull on um, in spring as as they really start growing. Um, and so that means you've got a source of water that they can draw down before you're you've entered the the summer period where you've got to have more frequent irrigations just to keep things ticking along. Um, but when you get to the summer irrigations, it's important to remember that there's a difference between what the probe is reading and how much water is actually in the soil. So you've all probably heard about the wetting onion or in sandy soils, the wetting carrot, uh, where below drip irrigations, um, below the drip emitters, you're getting a, uh, a wetting pattern that isn't covering the the full spec, the, the full area of soil um, that you would in from winter rains. And so if you've got a probe measuring in this example, 41% moisture, it the water around the probe that sorry the soil around the probe might well be measuring 41 percent moisture but the amount of water in the soil is completely different and that's just because of the the different methods of application so it's it, it's it's you, it's one of those things to be careful of that a certain value reading in winter that's caused by rains is not necessarily equivalent to the same soil moisture reading based on irrigation. Um, and the way we go about making sort of making making that um, making more sense of that in green brain is we've got the ability to adjust the refill level. So where there's more water available, you can have a greater depletion amount before the crops start getting towards anywhere near water stress. So you can have a lower level at which you've set your refill point. In contrast, in summer or in spring, when you're relying on a smaller area or volume of soil that's holding the water that you're delivering, you'd wanna lift that refill point up so that you're not depleting the that water as as much when before you're reapplying reapplying more water. So you'd have a different refill level in spring and in summer than you would through winter. Um, and sorry, I'll just go back a step. So below ev everyone that's using Green Brain, um, below the soil moisture graph, there is a tab that's called budget lines. If you click on that, you'll see something along the lines of this example, which shows you, um, which let well is the, the the method of entering full and refill levels. And you can see um, there's a little plus, a green square with a plus in it that means you can add additional refill or full levels. And the little green pencil allows you to edit the values that are there. And from memory, so I think Jeff Mitchell from Mitchell Agronomy has um, entered some spring refill points and some winter refill points for this is uh, one of the one of the dried fruits um, sites that Stuart was talking about at the beginning. Um, it's we've put in some realistic uh, refill levels and I've just pushed it forward into the future so that you can see what that would look like in Green Brain where 
uh, through winter, we've allowed that to drop down. Um, there's there's less stress on the plant and there's more more water volume available. As you go through to summer, the average graph in green brain also gives you a neat, simple way of um, of essentially timing the irrigations so that you're knowing how much water is available and when you're needing to irrigate next. Um, so following each irrigation event, the water would deplete to some level and then be reapplied. And the way we do that with the full and the refill levels through summer now, um, the blue line at the top is the full point, the red line shows you theoretical refill level. And when the when the average soil moisture that is set for the active root zone is uh, is approaching that refill point, it's it's a good time to irrigate. And what we do to make it easier to to understand this and to see things quickly, instead of having to go through every single graph, is if you imagine the range between the full point at the top and the red refill level at the bottom being a being sort of a zero to one hundred percent range, the you can see here the current blue water droplet icon is showing you at the in this example where the current average soil moisture is um, sitting. So if you turn that line around 90 degrees, you get a, a bar that gives you essentially a summary of that site. Um, and it will it is useful to show you where that site is sitting easy and quickly is the idea. And so to just take away some of the other stuff on the on the graph, you can see the the current average soil moisture levels sitting about three quarters of the way up the range between refill and full point. If the irrigation hadn't turned off on this system, then the the blue water droplet, I'm not sure if you can see the mouse on the screen, but that blue water droplet is higher, the current average soil moisture levels is higher than the full point, so the line turns into a blue arrow pointing to the right. If over time we didn't turn the taps on, we didn't irrigate, and the average soil moisture levels dropped below the refill line, that means the current average soil moisture levels would fall below the refill level, and again, that line would turn into a red arrow facing left. Um, and so what that would mean is that, what that means in the dashboard is that we can stack all of the different sites that are being monitored on top of one another, and it will give you a, a simple summary, if you like, of of how each of those sites is faring, whether they're below the refill level, above full point, or somewhere in between. Um, so that's on the dashboard in Greenbrain. Um, over on the left, the, there's a this is a computer view. It shows you there's two versions of the dashboard. The top one up here. So the should say you 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 reach you get to the dashboard by using this Rubik's cube style icon. To get to the user specific dashboard, which includes all of the sites across different properties, you use the the the, dash, the, the dashboard link at the top, the sort of universal dashboard, and then you can look at property specific dashboards. So you can see. It doesn't make as much sense when there's one or two sites for each, each of these properties, but if you've got 15 sites and one vineyard and 12 sites on another vineyard it, and they start to intermingle, it becomes confusing. So you can you can view the sites at one vineyard on its own looking at these property specific dashboards. Um, and now those they will automatically sort so that the driest sites are, sh are shown at the top and then as they, they get progressively wetter through the through the profile, um, sorry, through the through the list. 
so one thing that's important I mentioned at the beginning, the active root zone, it's 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 really critical to keep in mind where that is and make sure that only those sites, only those depths are selected. So if you think about in this example, you're looking at the top 50 centimetres selected um, and the uh, 60, 70 and 80 are deselected, whereas clicking those back on will add soil to the to the average that you're calculating it will change the point at which your where your current level current average soil moisture is sitting and it will on the down on the left here it will shift in some some way in this example i've said it, it makes it a lot drier but if you've got very wet clay subsoils for example it, it could shift it past the full point even though you've got not much water in the top 50 centimeters so without the active root zone and only the active root zone selected on the average graph the dashboard becomes less representative all right so the last um cons tool that we've got in greenbrain i suppose is to is the ability to add irrigation records um th they can be added for a particular date and a, at a particular time um, again like budget lines below the graph is an irrigation um, tab and clicking on that will I've so that it fits on the slide I've put it up on the left um, but it will it will show you uh, these this little interface that allows you to enter the value of in millimeters or in hours as to how long you've you've irrigated or how much you've irrigated there's a there's a field that allows you to put in a conversion factor between the two so that if you put in if you know if you're irrigating three hours at a time and there's a conversion factor then it can plot millimeters on the graph um, so it's on the same scale as rainfall for example um, and then it will below the input field it'll also give you the total irrigation amount applied and sorry <laughs> where is this going someone else is driving my presentation for me um OK, it will give you the total irrigation in millimetres applied and over the number of times. So four irrigation events to a total of 35 millimetres in this example. Um, now, what the other benefit to doing to adding in those irrigation events is that. There we go. Is that green brain will calculate or forecast how long you'll need to irrigate in order to go from current levels to full point. So ignore the maths, it's my way of sort of representing what's happening. Essentially by having his, historical irrigation events that correlate to some level of change in soil moisture, in the average soil moisture, and again across the active root zone, we can get a a rate of change with in soil moisture with irrigation so we can forecast how long you would need to irrigate or how much you'd need to irrigate to go from current soil moisture levels to full point um, and then that answer is dynamically so it's continuously updated um, is continuously calculated and updated on the dashboard and it's shown here on the right hand side of each graph as either the millimeters or the hours required to go from current levels to full point um, so I thought it would be, while well, I've got a lot of you here, I thought it would be worth 
mentioning there's a, a few different sources of weather data that are in Greenbrain that are available to um, growers to share into their Greenbrain account. So there's the Lower Murray Water Network that has these yellow sites. There's a couple that are marked with a cross that aren't working and haven't been working for a few months. Um, the yellow pins show sites for the Lower Murray system. Um, the white arrows are a, an approximation of where some new in canopy weather stations are going in the next few months. They're going to be installed. And then the blue little teardrops are the, the dried fruits Australia's sites that Stuart mentioned at the beginning of the session. Those are all weather stations or in canopy weather stations that are available to have data from those sites shared into Greenbrain users accounts, which means which means within your own Greenbrain account, we can automatically populate rain bars just as sort of the, the other part of the water balance. There's the irrigation um, levels you can see. So on the right here, you can see these blue bars of irrigation, sorry, blue bars of rainfall that are entered um, automatically by, from a nearby rain gauge. And also on the dashboard, you can click over to the second tab to look at a weather overview showing air temp humidity, uh, minimum overnight temperature, wind speed on some of the sites um, and, and other other little widgets to show how how local weather is and it will be dependent on where the weather station is as to how exactly how local that that is. Um, so as, I'm, as Stuart mentioned, Jeff Mitchell is in the area and he can provide any any level of support from I've said Lindsay Point to Boundary Bend, but probably anywhere further than that as well. Um, and if there's any questions, or feel free to contact me afterwards or 